In this video, I will show you how to implement basic machine learning neural network models using Keras. Now, Keras is basically a layer over TensorFlow which helps us to implement machine learning models and neural networks very easily. For this, I will be implementing by importing scikit-learn, Keras, Keras.models and Keras.layers. For manipulating the database, I will be using pandas and numpy. Now, for the dataset, I will be using a uniform distribution data set now this is basically random values extracted from a uniform distribution you can create many such data set to test different models on machine learning now i will be importing this by using pandas dot read csv method data sets are normally written in csv files only now data set dot head will show some values on the starting of this data set so this data set is divided in x and y where x is the input and y is the expected output. Now after this the data set has been inputted but it is in pandas data frame so we need to convert it in numpy array. So using this you can change the data set from pandas data frame to a numpy array. Next is the train test split. In train test split we need to split the data between training and testing purposes. As the name suggests, training will be used for training the model and after training the model, we need to test that data over some new data that will be our test data. Now test size can be given from 0.1 to 0.3 but if you go above 0.3 then it will be too much. Now random state is basically extracting randomly through the data set and this number basically is a seed for that. Now you can give this number anything you want, it doesn't matter. Now next is the train shape. So after you run this train test split, the train shape should come 25.5,1 if you are using my dataset. This dataset has been given in the description, you can easily download it from the GitHub. This notebook is also available in the GitHub site given below. Now after this is done, we need to define a model. Now defining a model is very simple. We are using a sequential model. So we write model equals sequential. So this initializes our model as a sequential model. Now to add different layers onto the neural network, we use the dot add method. Using that we give total three hidden dense layers. So add dense of 200 defines that we are adding a layer of dimension 200 so there will be 200 neurons in one single layer now input dimension should be one because at a time we are inputting one variable only so basically this should be our input dimension now i'll be using relu activation function which is rectified linear unit this gives sometimes a good performance than others you can also try 10h sigmoid and there are many others activation functions also now there are total 1, 2 and 3 hidden layers. Now the final layer is our output layer. Now in regression models the output layer should always contain a linear activation function. And as we are predicting a single value, the output neuron count should always be 1. So this completes our sequential model and defining it. Next is training a model. Now. We input a model and an output comes. Now on that output we need to train that data. So for this we need to define the loss function, optimizer and learning rate and there are many other parameters but on the basic there is a loss and optimizer and if you go a little bit deep there also is a learning rate. So learning rate is basically how fast the model will learn. Now loss I am using is the mean squared error, optimizer is Adam. Now there are also other optimizers called NADAM, RMS prop and many other cross logarithmic functions but in regression I only use RMS prop, NADAM and ADAM. Other than these three other optimizer functions are very dangerous to use. ADAM is a very reliable and safe to use. Next is the matrix. While training a model we will see a lot of values so using matrix we can see what our error is going to come so msc is basically mean squared error if we run this okay so we need to first run this and this now after we run this we can 
run this and see the summary of our model. There are total 3 dense layers and the 4th dense layer is our output layer. So you can see the number of parameters here. So next is fitting our model. Now while fitting our model we give in our x train, y train, number of epochs. So number of epochs is basically how many times the database will be iterated. Batch size is how many data will be iterated over a time and after each 32 iterations the model will learn itself. Next is the validation split. While learning we can see different parameters coming out. So using validation split we can split again the data into 0.15 and 0.85 and see what results are going to come at each epoch. Validation data is none so basically it splits the data from our x train and y train and verbose is basically what the information is going to show. If we give it 0 then nothing will be shown. If we give it 1 then each and every detail will be shown and in 2 the progress bar will not be shown. So let's just fit our data. So as you can see here uh, at the starting the mean squared error is very high. Now this is while training and this is the validation. Validation can be sometimes less more but it doesn't depend that much. It highly depends how much epochs you run. But after some epochs there may not be any change in our validation error. So as you can see here uh, it then bounces around 9 to 10. So when you start to see this you need to know that it's getting to started overfit. Now how do we know that our model has started to overfit to see that the loss when starts to increase and the uh, error starts to decrease then this means that our model has to started overfitting. While overfitting the validation mean squared error starts to increase very much. So as you can see at the starting it starts with 300% error, 9 error. Ok so this is mean squared error not percentage error. At the end it comes down to 10 which is pretty good. Now you can increase the epochs, increase the number of neurons or whatever you like and test over many different types of data. Now after this sometimes you may need to change the number of dense layers and a lot of different parameters. So let's say if you just change this to 400 and run this again. Now if you again see the summary this doesn't reset the model but adds another 4 or actually 3 layers to it. Now the fourth layer that was previously there has become an hidden layer and again so this is just messed up. So you need to first clear the model. So using clear session the session is clear. Now if you run this again and see the summary then as you can see here the model has got refreshed. Now after training this model so let's just train this again as we cleared the model. So okay so it has finished learning the next part is predicting the model so after training the model we may need to predict some values from that so let's just predict over our test data that we split it here so to predict our values we write the name of our model that is model dot predict method and we pass in our array now the name of our array is okay here it's x test so we pass in that name x test so if we run this okay so i just misspelled here let's predict okay so if we run this we get an output array that is our predictions so you can predict this data here now if you want to plot this data then you can simply type in import matplotlib dot pi plot as plt and you can simply plot this as plt dot plot x ok so model dot predict x test so this will basically give our predictions as a graph so you can test and change a lot of values and lot of things as you want. In the next video I will be showing 
how to create classification models using the same method in classification there is some additions here and there and it basically runs the same thank you for watching this video if you like this video and it helped you to create machine learning models and learn something new today then like this video subscribe to my channel for more such videos and give in the comments whatever you liked in this video or didn't like and if you want me to make such videos over anything you can always mention in the comments thank you